joining us right now, very last minute, and we're grateful that we can, anytime something like this comes up, we can be like, can somebody call Yates? Can we get Ye- Stephen Yates at Yates Comms? Is probably, he's going to become, as he is already on his way, I think one of the most in-demand people. Uh, he is he's he, he, he's the uh, expert on all of these things. Uh, the American First uh, uh, Institute. He's the the uh, handles everything related to China. Uh, Yates comes on Twitter. He joins us by phone now. Uh, we won't keep you very long, sir. We appreciate your time. Is this a provocation? Well, it certainly does seem provocative. Uh, I don't think we can get away with floating a balloon into the middle of China and have no one really care or pay take note. Uh, so just a simple common sense test of reciprocity, I think, would call out some of the uh, horse hockey that has come from China's diplomats about how about all you Americans just calm down. We're sorting this out. This is just a, a private enterprise. Well, we know that in the, the, the key police and information control state, there are no independent actors. Uh, and this doesn't just accidentally float into the middle of the continental United States. That is outrageously weird. I can't for the life of me figure out how it didn't run into a super stealth secret accident and get grounded at some point like yesterday. Uh, But it's just the whole thing is bizarre beyond belief. And our government couldn't look dumber trying to respond. That's the thing is that I because they said uh, the spokesperson for the DOD and his presser was saying, oh, well, it's going to be up there for a few more days, a few more days. Doing what exactly? Well, just think of it this way. This comes to us courtesy of Xi Jinping's Communist Party government that unleashed a deadly virus on the world that killed millions of people and took trillions of dollars out of the economy. It's no big deal to have them float some cheap crap out over the middle of the United States, not tell anybody about it. We're just going to let it float around. This is just unbelievably insane stuff. Mm. Now, and what gets me to Pentagon Press Secretary was General Pat Ryder was saying that, yes, we were aware of China's assertion that it's a weather balloon. But he reiterated that, well, we know it's a surveillance balloon and there's nothing that they can do about it. So what if because it's 11 miles up in the air? I know even amongst the you know record holding snipers amongst us that, you know, that's kind of a far shot for, you know, a, a rifle to make. Maybe a Ginsu drone can go up there and chop it up. I don't know. What happens, though, if the U.S. government takes it down? Because I thought that writer's words were weird. It was almost like he was saying, well, you know, we're not going to tell you where it is. People can look up and see it. And, uh, you know, and then if they want to do something, it sounded almost like he was saying you guys can handle it. I mean, what, what did you make of that? Well, number one, I'm amazed this didn't constitute a climate emergency and they would have marshaled all forces on the planet to take it down immediately. But number two, I lived in the White House on a day when they flew a fighter jet into a lumbering EP-3 surveillance aircraft, knocked it out of the sky, held our crew hostage for 10 days, and then sent us a multi-million dollar bill. So I I just don't put any credence into the notion that, oh, well, we can't take this down. Why not? Mm -hmm. And are you saying that we have like a thousand things in China's airspace and we don't want them to retaliate by taking them down? Give me a break. Yeah. I, that's the thing. We can't figure out why the administration is there some sort of I mean, what are they worried about? What could what could possibly be their opposition, the reason for their opposition in shooting this thing out of the sky? Well, uh, the usual Diplo talk would be, well, you know, we have big, bigger issues at stake. We have, you know, of course, the climate emergency. And then there's, of course, all kinds of warm and fuzzy things around the world. We need them to stop helping the Russians kill Ukrainians. Uh, And, of course, there's these threats against Taiwan that we need to try to engage them to try to to steer them away from confrontation and conflict. Mm. Uh, And it might get in the way of the next meeting that supposedly we're up for. All of that is a waste of everyone's time. It's pretty clear and simple. And frankly, I'm ashamed that we don't have a government that has its wherewithal to make sure that something like this is down and we're talking about it after the fact instead of it still being up. And we're talking about it. That's a great point. One last thing for you, and we appreciate your time today talking with Stephen Yates. Anthony Blinken was supposed to be going to China. He was going to leave for Beijing this weekend. And at first he was going to meet with lower level government officials. And the weird thing was that as the 
initial conjecture about this spy balloon started kind of filtering through social media and started piquing the interest of the press. It was on Wednesday, apparently, that it was announced from Beijing that instead of just meeting with some lower level officials, Blinken was actually going to be meeting with Xi Jinping himself. And it seemed as though that they kind of threw that out there to me anyway, and I don't know if I'm wearing a tinfoil hat or looking too much into this, but it kind of seems like they they threw that out there as a way to, to induce him as this story started building so that he wouldn't alter the schedule and would continue to keep his, his time in Beijing even after this thing with the spy balloon broke. Do you Do you get that same impression? Well, I do think that the Chinese somehow shifted gears and wanted to put on their version of a charm offensive to try to pull relations somewhat back on track. They've done a real number on their own economy. Mm. They've done a number on their own public. Uh, and so they wanted to, I think, hold up the facade that things aren't running out of control uh, and that they can handle the Americans. Mm. Uh, I, the whole thing, though, from an American point of view, why did it take some weird alleged weather balloon to get people to react like this? We had a fake police station up in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. We had all of this impact of COVID. Tons of people's jobs and other things robbed out from under them. Why did it take this for people to sort of say, whoa, this is the last straw? Uh, and uh, I assume Blinken was meant to set up some kind of a conversation with President Biden and Xi Jinping uh, to try to work their magic. I don't know on what. Uh, and this just gets in the way of the diplomatic gears of planning those meetings. So yeah. The whole thing is just people running with scissors that shouldn't have them. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. Well, I'm hoping as this thing continues to float over the U.S., maybe we get some, uh, I don't know, I, I hope that 4chan try to play capture the flag with it like they did that Shia LaBeouf flag uh, during the early days of the Trump administration. Maybe they, I just feel like that, you know, in America, as I said, our unofficial motto is here, hold my beer. This would, I mean, this is a country where yeah. we should just make true that hole behind every blade of grass. And it's not the government that did it. Oh, it's just some people that just took this took the balloon down. I think that's exactly. far scarier. They said this was some private enterprise. This was some private initiative. Yeah. So is our takedown. There Thank you go. You. Right there. Stephen Yates at Yates Comms. Always appreciate your time with us today, my friend. You can find him at the American First Policy Institute. He uh, runs the China Policy Initiative there. Thank you so much, my friend. Have a great weekend. 